Hey everybody, it's Hardy with Electronic Test Equipment and today we're going to take a look at the Fluke 87 Series 5. We're going to break it down and if you're having display issues with fading, ghosting or missing segments, we're going to break it down and I'm going to show you how to clean the LCD display and the elastomeric connectors so that you can get your display back up and running. Usually this will work. But over time, the elastomeric connectors lose their bounce. You will find yourself having to clean the elastomeric connectors very often. When that becomes the case, the best solution is to just replace the elastomeric connectors and then it'll be good for another 10 years plus. So without further ado, let's open this thing up and see what we're looking at here. This is the Fluke 87 breakdown quick fix for the faded display. Let's have a look. First thing, we're going to remove the rubber boot, protective casing. This Fluke 87 series, series five, you always know that they have the different style rubber boot. It's a little more rounded. It's a little more flexible. So first things first, we're going to take it over and we are going to not drop the camera. But we're going to find the battery compartment here. We're going to use a flathead screwdriver to access the 9 volt battery. If all you need to do is replace the 9 volt battery, your job's almost done. There's a little lip here. Probably shouldn't use any metallic. You know, the, the instinct is to always use this to pry it up. So many times I noticed on these units, this section here will be really tore up. You know, using the flatheads, even. It, I don't think it's necessary to use any tools you can it has a lip here you can if you can just get any little bit of traction just lift up on it it should come right off it's the battery the battery door battery compartment and we've got the 9 volt battery let's disconnect the 9 volt battery and remove all the power source so now we're looking at three screws here that we need to remove in order to open this unit up. These two here on the bottom and this one here in the middle. Let's do that now. I'm gonna use a different screwdriver. It's got a better grip. And so now we've got all the screws removed. The battery compartment is free and clear, so we can use press inside here, and we want to keep this rubber gasket along the bottom case. So we're going to just apply some pressure here from the bottom while maybe lifting up on the, on the top case, lift it up and out. Sometimes it may feel like it's applying too much pressure, but you need to trust the process. The more you do it, the more comfortable you get with it, the more familiar. So sometimes it might seem as if you're applying too much pressure or it might break. That may be the case. 
but when you're familiar with these units you'll you'll know you'll know enough you see this here this this is the rubber gasket for this input connector and this thing's all loose and flappy this shouldn't be like that hmm Oh, before I forget, I'm going to take the button assembly and I'm going to put it back in the top case so I don't forget. And I'm just going to leave it there. So we've got these two fuses. We have the milliamp fuse. We've got the, the 11 amp fuse. Well, the 10 amp fuse, but it's rated for 11 amps. And now let's just gently lift, lift up on the input connector and see how it looks. It seems everything's free and clear, so we're just going to lift it right on up and out. And we're going to set the bottom case to the side. We can see here the beeper assembly. We're going to keep everything right side up so nothing falls out. And now we're ready to access the LCD. We've, we've got the glass LCD here. And it's being held in place by this LCD face mask that, like the other units, it just snaps on over and has these teeth here that it snaps over you can see the notches they've actually opened it up on the other units it's all it's all concealed you can't even see the notches but they've uh, made some improvements in the design so we're going to take a flathead screwdriver we're going to gently wedge it up under there and just give it a little bit of twist and one side at a time just kind of work our way down and as I'm doing this I'm I'm holding it just to make sure it doesn't pop off and have the glass fall out so now this is free to just come right off And I will set this off to the side as well. So we've got the glass LCD and it looks like we've got the old pink elastomeric connectors. Over time, these elastomeric connectors lose their bounce. And that may be why it's starting to fade or it cause missing segments so we're going to use this alcohol pad to clean both sides of the display and both sides of each elastomeric connector and then I'll use another alcohol pad or even the same one it seems clean enough and I will uh, clean inside of each slot that the elastomeric connectors go inside of. So I'm going to gently lift up on the glass. And here we go. As expected, we have the elastomeric connectors that are stuck to the glass. That's perfectly normal. I'm going to set this over here to the side for now. Well, I don't want to set it too far out of the side. We'll just set it right here. But we're going to remove the pink elastomeric connectors from the glass. They're just stuck on there. It's okay. It's not going to cause any harm to pull them off. And I'm going to get my alcohol pad. And we are going to clean each side of these. There's one. Let's keep them in frame here. You can use any kind of alcohol pad or cleaning, 70 proof, 80 proof. 
even if you have the bottles, you can use cotton swab. Just dip the cotton swab into the alcohol and clean away. I'm going to clean the top and the bottom of the LCD itself. And I'm going to set this aside so now I can get inside here to these slots and clean these as well. And I'm using the same alcohol pad. And I'm just wedging it in there and just sliding it back and forth. If these are real dirty or dusty, if it's an older unit that's had some penetration because the dust seal was missing, I would probably use a different alcohol pad to clean this, this part. But this one's nice and clean, so I, I think it's okay to use the same pad. So now that we've cleaned everything up and wiped it down with the alcohol pads, we're ready to reassemble. And we are going to start with the pink elastomeric connectors, and we're just going to insert one slot at a time. followed by the glass LCD display. And we want to make sure that we're putting it right side up. This one has some indication. We can see the part number and some numbers here. And so that when I'm looking at this, it's right side up. So I know that this LCD is right side up. So we'll set this in place and make sure that it's flush and center because now we're going to place this LCD mask over this. And this is always one of the trickier parts. It's so easy to chip these corners of the glass display or apply just a little too much pressure on one side other than the other. Um, so I'll just put it on even and I'll apply the same pressure on top and bottom until one of the sides snaps down and then I'll follow through with snapping the rest of it into place. Okay, everything looks good. And now I'm going to uh, reinsert the main PCB here back into the bottom case. And it guides right in. We, we, we see there's these channels, these grooves, these keys, if you will and they fit into the slots on the main PCB. Just line it up with that and drop it right in. Don't force anything, just nice and easy does it. And the battery connector tucks right in, has a little slot for the nine volt battery wire connector to fit in there as well. Now I'm going to insert the buttons switch like so, and that just pops right on. And now we're ready to install the top case and I'll just kind of use some pressure on the bottom side first. It's nice and snug. And then we're looking for that snap on the top. And I know there's a nice, good, snug connection. Everything's assembled properly. And now I'm ready to install the 9-volt battery to give it power so we can turn it on and verify that the LCD is good.
we're not going to install any screws just yet because we want to make sure that everything is nice and proper and working. We also want to make sure we didn't forget anything like the switch, the buttons, or something else. So let's turn it on and see what we have here. All right, looks good. Looks good. Okay, so now that we've cleaned everything up and we've assembled everything and we've powered it on and everything looks as it should, we're ready to reinstall the screws, reassemble, complete the reassembly process and put this unit back into operation. I hope you all found this video helpful. I am Hardy with Electronic Test Equipment and I will catch you all on the next video. Take care everybody.